So, you're looking to buy some 3D printed miniatures. Perhaps you're gearing up to print some yourself, or maybe you're opening a print store and want to know what the best resin is for you to use. Well then, chances are you've come across dozens of YouTube videos and various articles online about the printing experience with a bunch of different resins. But how much does that choice in resin actually matter once a model hits your hobby table? Today I'm going to be testing out a few different resins to ask the question, should hobbyists care what resin their minis are printed with? This video has been made possible thanks to Yes That's 3D Printed and their Wargamer resin by Fohammer. I have had many an experience with resin printed miniatures, all the way from printing them myself on my Photon S back when I had the space, to buying 3D printed models from local print stores when I wanted hero miniatures for D&D. But I've never really found a resin that perfectly fits what I want for a miniature. So naturally, when the folks behind Wargamer Resin reached out and asked if they could send me some prints, I was curious. They sent over a selection of miniatures and agreed to help fund the purchasing of some additional copies of these models. All done by some of my local print stores in various different resins, so that I had something to test and compare. But other than that kindness, this is an otherwise unpaid, unsponsored video, so you will be getting my unbiased opinion on these various resins. And feel free to take that with a pinch of salt if you must. Throughout my tests with these various resins, I kept myself oblivious to which print store actually used which resin, not checking back on my emails that I'd sent a few months ago. I simply kept them all labelled A through D, just so I could identify them as we moved through the tests. But for your ease of viewing, I will be telling you which print stores use which resins after we get through the initial first impressions section of this video. Among the resins we'll be looking at today, in no particular order, we have Elegoo's ABS-like resin, Isan PLA Pro resin, of course our Wargamer resin, and lastly a Wild Card, a custom blend from one of my local print stores. Just because I wanted to see if print stores that mix their own resins actually have an edge over the competition. As we move through these tests, I'll be scoring each resin on a scale of 1 to 5, in a few different categories that we'll discuss here in a moment. This has a really nice, like, polish to it. There's a slight, a slight gloss to everything, uh, which is really nice. It really helps you see the details uh, at a glance. It feels like a slightly glossier, like, GW plastic, right? a little bit of like support scarring but not much yeah like there's something about the the feel of this that feels like plastic like even just being able to do that is huge they sent this through unsanded which is nice you can see a bit of support scarring there not much in the way of warping it just needs a bit of a sand we can see there are a few little details here that have been snapped off just like the heads of some of these mushrooms but all of the support seem to have come out pretty easily overall. Now there's still a couple of these tiny little threads in here which I knew would probably remain on most of these. Just picking this up, there's a really nice flex to it. Really appreciate that. Now we can see here a little bit of remaining support material. Let's see about getting that out of here. Ooh, interesting. Let me explain that. Uh, the reason I'm interested in that, every other resin that I've ever cut or sliced, it's felt like, like scraping chalk, like it splinters off in chunks. That actually felt like I was cutting through plastic. There's a softness to that. Like it feels like cutting plastic, which is wild. Overall, my first impressions of Resin A, which I will now reveal is our Wargamer resin, is that it has a nice glossy finish that makes it easy to see all the details on the raw print. It has a nice flexibility that I'm hoping will lead to good durability later on, and it didn't feel chalky like a lot of 3D printed miniatures I've worked with in the past. Instead, it had an almost waxy-like finish. And looking over these models, only a few tiny failures on the nightmare of a model that is this mycenoid. These Wargamer resin prints were sent over by the team at Minimaker.com who were absolutely great to work with every step of the way. So I just wanted to say thanks to them first of all, and also to let all of you know that they've just launched their new website, and they have some awesome features over there. You can select your prints from three different quality settings, be it budget, display, or gaming, with all of the prints they've provided today being their gaming tier of prints which provides a nice durability but also really high quality finish. 
and they even offer a really cool loyalty and referral program where you can earn points by buying miniatures or referring their website to others which you can eventually use to help pay for your miniatures. And they offer all of that with 10 euro worldwide shipping, which is awesome for folks like me down here in New Zealand where that's usually a nightmare. I'll be sure to leave my referral link to their website down below so if you want to check out their catalogue or buy some prints from them, please go ahead and use that. Ooh, there's a bit of a smell on that one. Yeah, this is a bit more what I'm used to. This is a really nice matte finish, to be honest. I didn't think I liked this as much as this. Now that it's out of the pack, though, this is really nice. Oh, jeez, yeah. Okay, that's a little more what I'm used to, where it feels like stuff is splintering off. Yeah, okay. That's a bit more familiar to me. This is the printer resin experience I'm used to. Chipping and flying off and like splintering. Okay, good type fit though. Support scarring is minimal. It's a little more bumpy, but yeah, don't don't like that. Where it's almost like, yeah, chalky is the best way to describe that, I think. I like the visual look of this one uh, a lot more than I, I thought I did. We're seeing a little bit more of that support scarring up here. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing a lot more, um, definitely seeing a lot more imperfections happening in here. A couple of those supports look like they've failed here. Um, the tops of a lot of these mushrooms are gone. Supports are really uh, sticking to this and really connected in here. And this, let's be honest, this is a bit of a nightmare model um, for printing. So the fact that it's got a wee bit of this is good, but it's definitely not as clean as this one here. I like the look of this one a lot for the Space Marine, where these are like big, obvious shapes, sharp corners, big flat surfaces. Which one of these is going to be easier to see on the table, right? My first impressions of Resin B. This is Alagoo's ABS-like resin. It has a gorgeous matte finish that makes it really easy to see all the details when you're up close with the model. But if you were in a situation where you ended up using this model unpainted on the table for any reason, and took even just a few steps back, I have a feeling that a lot of that detail would get lost. This resin does feel a bit more rigid and chalky, a bit more in line with what I'm used to with 3D printed miniatures, which does unfortunately mean that it's a little more prone to chipping away rather than nicely slicing when you're taking something like a hobby knife to it. These specific prints were done by Tabletop Tales, who are an Australian based 3D print store, so if you're interested in checking out their stuff, their links are also down below. This is the only not grey one that we have here. Interesting, I'm not seeing as much remnant supports here, but I'm definitely seeing a lot more failures. So far, I think this would be the hardest one to identify on the table without like picking it up and looking at details, right? It's captured all the detail, but again, it's really hard to read. This is not one that you want to be cleaning up post cure. Every time I'm wicking one of these little support uh, remnants off, it feels like I'm about to snap the whole leg. Like there is no give. This is a very rigid resin. Like I feel like this is the kind of resin you expect to snap, right? Already just doing this, I can feel the resistance in that bit of the arm there. And then if we jump back over to this first one, it's like that feels like it could survive being dropped. At a glance, I can't say I'm a huge fan of this resin for miniatures. This is Isun's PLA Pro resin. And I'm not sure if it's the surface finish or the black color that's been chosen here, but unless you're in the perfect lighting at the hobby table, I'm finding it really hard to see any of the details of the raw prints. This resin was by far the most solid and rigid of the lot so far, with very little flex or give to the material, and it was very difficult to get a hobby knife through this cleanly. I was having to kind of just chip chunks off the model. There was absolutely not going to be any slicing happening here. 
And on top of that it also had the most failures of the little mushrooms on the mycenoids back. These prints are done by one of my local print stores, Kiwi Tabletop. If you want to have a browse of their catalogue or grab anything from them, their links are also in the description. This looks very similar to the first one, albeit a little bit less glossy. This is really nice. It has that same, like it feels like actual plastic, it doesn't feel like a chalky resin. Yeah, even that support scarring is minimal. Okay, that's good. It's not quite as smooth as that first one. I think a little bit of remnant support on here. Just wanna... Yeah. Okay, so it's somewhere in between. Like, there's a little bit of give and it feels like you're scraping for a moment, but then it does eventually, like, snap and pop off like a lot of the rest. These two at the back, these feel very chalky. The best way I can describe this is it feels waxy. This is somewhere in between, like it shares similar properties. If I had to guess, I'd say this is probably our uh, wild card, our mixture. Okay, yeah, we're seeing a couple of failures in here again. A lot of the tips of the mushrooms that succeeded are still there though. A little bit of support material still in here. Okay, that doesn't feel quite as bendy as the first one, but definitely uh, has more flex than the other two. And again, I can make out all these details with the naked eye. Okay, I think the biggest separation between this and the first one is this doesn't feel like I could cut through a thick part of the model. It's great for scraping little details off the edges with that like slight waxiness. It doesn't splinter and chip off. But as soon as you try and go for a little bit more material, that's when that like slight chalky brittleness of resin printing comes in. Resin D, the last of our four, which by default means that it is our custom blend. Now a custom blend will vary wildly between stores, just by the very nature of it being custom. At a glance this seems to be sitting somewhere between Wargamer and Elegoo. It has a nice satin finish, not quite as glossy as Wargamer and not quite as matte as Elegoo, which I think actually makes this my favourite surface finish for the raw printed models. The satin finish makes it super easy to make out all of the details on the model, even from a bit of a distance, and this also had a nice flex to it, which I'm hoping again will lead to durability later on. And this resin also allowed for a good amount of control when trying to remove material with a hobby knife. It allowed me to scrape away small details, but as soon as I tried to take off any large chunk of material, it would again chip and shatter like some of the others. These models were sent over by Mini Manatee, and again they're another great local print store with a huge range of models, if you want to check out their stuff their links are also below. I mean immediate first impressions without even getting these out of the bag yet, as I like these two the most. Visually and feel, um, that like slight waxiness that just separates them a little bit from feeling chalky, really nice. Today we'll be looking at a variety of categories across these various prints and using a bit of a scoring system to see which resin actually comes out on top. Our categories for today will be the clarity of the raw print, the success of the fine details of the model, the durability of the pieces themselves, how easy each resin is to slice or scrape with a hobby knife, as well as how reliably each one can be cut with nippers, and finally once we get some primer on these we can compare the sharpness of the details for painting and display. And with first impressions out of the way, that brings us to the first few scores of the day. Resin A, Wargamer Resin, will be getting a 5 out of 5 for raw visibility. The glossy finish and sharp features make it super easy to see the shapes of the model from a distance, and this will be getting a 4 out of 5 for print success, as we're just seeing a few missing details on some of those mushrooms. Resin B, Elegoo's ABS-like. This gets a solid 4 out of 5 on visibility. The nice matte finish and lighter edges make the details clear when you're up close and personal with the model. And for print success, I'll be giving this a 3 out of 5. We're seeing a few more missing pieces than the previous resin, but overall this is still a great print. Resin C, eSun's PLA Pro Resin. This gets an unfortunate 2 out of 5 on visibility. It's really hard to make out the details of the print, they just get lost in the surface finish of the model. And another 2 out of 5 for success, as we are also seeing the most missing and failed mushrooms of the four prints. Finally, Resin D, the custom blend. For raw visibility this also gets a very clear 5 out of 5. Equally as clear and defined as the Wargamer with possibly even a slightly nicer finish. 
and this also gets a 4 out of 5 for success. Just one or two little missing pieces, very similar to the Wargamer resin. Alright, let's break some stuff. The Kobold models that we saw earlier all came with an unused spear, so we'll be doing a bit of a bend test and seeing how each piece holds up. I'm actually going to save the Wargamer res until the end here, and you'll see why in a moment, so we're actually going to be starting with Elegu. This resin has a nice flex that looks like it could survive a tumble or two, letting us get three quite straining bends in before it finally gives out. PLA Pro resin, however, oh yikes, <laughs> broke with only the slightest force being applied to it. Now for the custom blend, this has been keeping up with Wargamer and seemed to have a nice flex during first impression. Oh, interesting. A little bit more of a bend than the eSun PLA Pro, but barely. Now for Wargamer. I was expecting this to hold up very similarly to Elegu. It had a nice flex that should lead to decent durability, but well. That's crazy to me. Every other resin I've used for miniatures in the past, they would break if you looked at them wrong. So this passes with flying colours in my eyes. An easy 5 out of 5 on durability for Wargamer. A well earned 3 for Elegu, it had a good flex and decent durability. Isan gets a flat 0 for durability unfortunately, and our custom blend gets a 1. If only because it bent a little bit further before snapping. Next up is a pass with some sprue cutters and a hobby knife. Wargamer resin felt pretty great to carve away with the hobby knife. You have to try and take off a pretty big chunk before it thinks about chipping or snapping, but it does get there. So we'll give this a 4 out of 5 for the hobby knife. Unfortunately, trying to make a clean cut with a pair of nippers left a bit to be desired. The Wargamer resin seemed to crack away, creating a very rough cut, so it gets a 2 out of 5 on the nippers. Elegu's resin, consistently giving me what I have come to expect from 3D printer resins, felt more akin to scraping away dense chalk than carving plastic, and any attempt to carve away large pieces of material would result in chipping. So it gets a 2 out of 5 for the knife, and when it comes to using the nippers it just snaps the resin somewhere in the vicinity of where the pressure is being applied by the tool, so a 1 out of 5 there. this felt more like trying to cut brittle acrylic. I had to push the knife in as far as the resin would allow and then chunks would just snap off the model. I think it would be very hard to get clean cuts here. 1 out of 5. It has a similar story as Elegu for the nippers. It just snaps the resin somewhere in the general vicinity, so a 1 out of 5 there again. For the custom blend, not quite as smooth as the Wargamer for slicing away material. Small areas could be sliced off nicely, but as soon as you try and take off more than a little bit, the knife digs in and chips a chunk off. But still a healthy 3 out of 5, just a slight lack of control. As for the nippers though, this gave the cleanest cuts. It still felt as if the resin was breaking rather than cutting, but it at least constantly gave flat cuts where the nippers were pressing. So a bit better than the others at a 4 out of 5. Now that we've taken a look at the raw prints from success to durability to how easy it would be to modify or kitbash with these models, 
let's throw some primer on them and see what the painting experience is like, because at the end of the day that's, hopefully, how all of your miniatures are ending up. And even just with a coat of primer, I expected all of these models to start looking identical. And for the most part, they do. The only model that stands out is this one, showing more obvious ley lines on the hard surface model. Which, I will take a guess, is our Elegoo ABS like, just because I know that their print store printed at slightly thicker layer heights than the others, at 50 microns versus the 30 or 20 that other stores used. Which is why I assume we're seeing some more noticeable layer lines here. But even so, I cannot tell the other more organic models from their counterparts. This kobold does look like it has lost a little bit of that wood grain on the shield, which I don't think is just due to the primer. Overall, these all look damn near the same, with a very similar amount of detail showing through, and all equally sharp at a first glance. But let's go ahead and paint up the space bear models and I'll give my thoughts again here in a moment. The painting experience across these miniatures is exactly what I've come to expect from resin printed miniatures. An enjoyable, clean painting experience. None of these models stood out as better or worse than the others. Each resin caught the nice soft details of the organic miniatures and also produced nice edges on all of the hard surface models. And they all had some amount of layer line visibility. I think that resin printing is at a point now that the most important factor is the user. Yes, some resins are better suited to certain uses or look slightly different straight off of the printer, and yes some printers sport more features, but as long as you have a somewhat modern resin printer that has been dialed in to whatever half decent resin you're using, you're going to be printing some gorgeous miniatures that are going to be a blast to paint. What it really boils down to when choosing a resin now is what you actually want to be able to do with those models. If you want to be able to scrape away material, maybe kit bash a little bit, or you just need good durability because you're going to be traveling from game to game, something like Wargamer will be a great fit. But let's say maybe you're printing a giant 150mm base for a miniature and you really don't want this thing to warp. Maybe something like Isan would be better for that. Overall, for me as a hobbyist who spends most of my hobby time here at the table customizing or painting miniatures for D&D games, where my friends are also fully hands on with my miniatures, I can say that Wargamer would be the best fit for me. A good amount of customizability and being able to edit these models, but also a great amount of durability, meaning that they're way more likely to survive 20, 30, 40 D&D sessions. With the runner up for me specifically probably being Elegoo, with their less forgiving but still very impressive flexibility. And, as we're seeing here, if one of your local print stores uses a custom blend, and you have a bit of extra money to spare, it might be worth checking out what they have to offer. As we can see here, the custom blend was able to run with the best of them. Let me know down below if you have any experience with any of the resins we used here today, or if you have a different go-to. And feel free to share your experiences with Wargamer or other brands of resin. Thanks again to Yes That's 3D Printed and their Wargamer resin by Fohammer as well as a huge thank you to all of the print stores that got involved with the video. Please do consider liking the video and subscribing to keep my channel popping up on your homepage, but most importantly, thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a good one.